In the next series of lectures, we're going to talk about sorting algorithms. Now, it seems obvious that things should be sorted, but actually, it is the most fundamental algorithm. Pretty much all Google, all these different things are based upon sorting. As soon as you can sort a list, you can search a list. Everything is in order. So, we're going to talk about four different types of algorithms the bubble sort and the selection sort. They're just classic sorting algorithms where you just deal with the list. And then there's merge sort and quick sort. Now, merge sort and quick sort are called divide and conquer. And we'll deal with them separately. Bubble sort, selection sort, kind of link them together. They're very similar. And it's good to think of them like that. So what is bubble sort? Well, the name first, bubble. What happens is, Let's say you're given a list of numbers, five, three, two, four, one, and you're asked to solve them, to sort them in order, which is obviously one, two, three, four, five. We know the answer. What bubble sort does is it puts a bubble around the numbers. It says, okay, five and three, which is bigger? Whichever it's bigger, it'll switch. So now three, five, three becomes three, five, these numbers here aren't touched, yeah? And that is our first run of our first operation of the bubble sort. Then we do our second operation. We go, okay, three is there. So um, which is bigger, five or two? And switches them. So here, next one, it switches to two and five. And now five gets pushed along, yeah? Because what's gonna happen is, as you bubble them together, the largest number will end up at the end. And that's where you want it to be. So next one. So we had two and five there, and then we now look at, make a bubble of five and four, which is bigger, five, so it switches. And now that's our new order. Three, two, stay where they are, we don't touch. Four, five is what's switched, and one. Next step. Okay, you take the five and one as a bubble and you switch them, yeah? So now we have three, two, four, one, five. And five is exactly where it should be. It's the largest number, it's at the end. But we only have now sort of one number. So we start again. We go to the front and ask which is bigger, two or three? Three, and it switches them, yeah? And now we step along. We make a new bubble. Three, four, and ask which is bigger? Four. Now, the computer doesn't know that four is bigger than three. It has to check it, so that's still an operation. It still has to do something. Even though nothing changes, it still counts. It's still an operation. Next, it bubbles four and one, which is bigger four, so it switches them. And that's our second pass. So that's our first, and that's our second. Yeah. So we have to have another pass. So here we have uh, our next pass. We start again at the very top, two and three. Yeah. Two and three are in order, so it doesn't do anything. But it still has to ask. Next, it goes, which is bigger, three or one? and switch them. So three, four, five are all in the right location. So now we have our very last one. Two and one, switch, fourth pass, all done. That took 10 operations, yeah? Four for the first, three for the second, two and then one, yeah? And we don't have to, yeah. So, but what's actually happening in the algorithm. So in the algorithm, what it does is, here's our original list, five, three, two, four, one, yeah? And it goes, okay, I have them, uh, our position, a position zero, it's five, position one, it's three. And I ask, the computer asks, is three less than five? If it is, swap, yeah? Then it says, is, a2, which is the next one, less than A1, swap. 
if it is. If A3 is less than A2, swap. If A4 is less than A3, swap. And similarly, when you put in numbers, you see swap, swap, swap. Now it only swaps if that's the case. And that gets us to our first pass. So once again, that's four operations, starting zero, one, two, three, four. Zero, one, two, three, which is four operations. And that's what we just saw. Next, we have the five in the right place, so we have to sort again, yeah? So in that scenario, once again, you start at the very front and say, which is bigger, put it past. Which is bigger, put it past. Which is bigger, put it past. Yeah. And I arrange them in that fashion. So now we have our three operations for our second pass. Two operations. Once again, it goes, okay, ask which is bigger. Bigger one goes to the right. Which is bigger, bigger one goes to the right. And keeps pushing it to the right. There's our two operations. And our very last one is you only ask about A1 and A0. Swap. So note, it's very easy for us to go, okay, what's the biggest number put at the end? But a computer can only record two numbers at a time and switch them, switch them, switch them. You have to give an algorithm that it can do. Here it is in code. Now, here we come across two, something that's very important a double for loop. Our first for loop is our passes. Our second for loop is within each pass. Okay. So now we have a double loop. And this little trick here is just to replace it. You can write it in a slightly different way, but that works fine. Okay. In our flow chart form, we pass in our A, and we start, we say j is equal to i, i is equal to zero, go down, j is equal to j plus one, go through, and down, down. But we loop around here, loop around here, loop around here, loop around here. And when we finish that loop, we go back, we loop, loop, loop. That's what the double loop is. The double loop is in each pass we have a loop, but the loops are reducing every single time. So what is the order of time for bubble sort? Now, here we have our algorithm. Let's think about uh, is a list of six letters, yeah? If we have six letters, to sort the first one, it takes five operations, because you check, switch, check, switch, check, swap, 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 yeah? So that's five operations. So now we have the last one in the right place. So we have now a list of five numbers. So we do four operations. We go through swap, swap, swap. And now the fourth and fifth position, or the fifth and sixth positions are fine. And we go again. Then we have three operations, two operations, and actually plus one. But what we have here is something that's summing up and diminishing. So this is length n. It goes n plus n minus one plus n minus two all the way down to one. Yeah. So every time you sort a number into place, you reduce the size of the list. So how does that go in a more general form? So you have your first for loop, yeah? That's of n operations. Then we have our second for loop. That has a couple of things in it, but really just call it, that's n minus one divided by two, yeah? The reason why that is, it's because each operation, you know, it's half and half and half again, yeah? But they're multiplied by each other. So that gives me my total time is n times n minus one divided by two. n squared minus one, or n plus one, which is approximately n squared. So that means if you're sorting a list of 100, it'll take 10,000. A list of 1,000 will take a million. A list of a billion, a billion squared. Think about Facebook. Think about Twitter. Think about these large databases. They have to continually sort the order. They're always arranging things. They're always rearranging. If it takes n squared, it's very expensive to sort. Now, you only have to sort something once, but then a new user comes in. So that's a new name. You have to sort again. Yeah. These algorithms work perfectly fine for letters as well. Let's talk about the word sorting. What we do is 
we start with SO and we put them in order. The largest letter goes next. Then we go next one, ORS, largest letter goes next. ST doesn't change because T is the largest letter. Then IT, T is the largest letter and so forth. And that's a first pass. A first pass. Now, that took one, two, three, four, five, six operations, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a seven letter word. How many operations will be the next one? Five, four, three, two, one. Actually, when sorting letters, I like to just map them immediately to numbers and it makes my life a lot easier. But you can happily do them in letters as well. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about the selection sort, which is very similar and actually easier for us to do, but harder for a computer. Um, there's something else to note about these sorting algorithms is if you can think of a new sorting algorithm, it'll make you millions. Most things need these. They're very important and very relevant.